Hi there, it's Pastor Reese, and we thank you so much for watching today. We know this message is going to be a blessing in your life. Enjoy. We want to welcome you to this Good Friday service. Thank you, worship team. You guys are amazing. And uh, I just want to say thank you for inviting us into your home today. Wherever you're at, know that you're not alone, that God loves you, he cares about you, and we love you and care for you. And even though there may be some distance right now between us, know that we are here with you in spirit, and God is there in truth. Amen? Well, um, I just wanted to share for just a few moments with you before we uh, take communion with Pastor Reese, just on the idea of Good Friday. You know, when I think of that word, Good Friday, I don't, I don't, when I think of Jesus' death and crucifixion, I'm like, what's really good about that? Pain, suffering, brutality of mankind, the, the turning back um, of everything good, and, and Jesus' death. But what's awesome and why we call it Good Friday is not what's happening uh, right now, 2,000 years ago, it's what the byproduct of that pain and suffering is three days later. It's Easter. It's resurrection. Because here's the deal. Any one of us can die. It's a totally different thing to be raised from the dead. And God did that through Jesus Christ so that we may have access to that relationship, to have forgiveness of our sins. And that's why today is so good. And it's a good Friday. And that's really what I just want to break down for each one of us because as we think on the, the last few hours of Jesus' life before he was even arrested, you know, you think of him coming. Uh, last week we celebrate, you know, Hosanna. We celebrate Palm Sunday and life is good and it's amazing. And literally within a week, we're seeing a completely different change in humanity turning its back on Jesus. And Jesus, even getting with his disciples in the Last Supper, and as we do communion here in a few moments, you know, what that represented. And then being in that last moment of fellowship and relationship and then telling them, guys, I'm, I'm about to go be crucified. I'm about to go die. And I could just imagine what was going through their heads and their minds. Like, what, what are you talking about? I mean, Jesus, you walked on water. You've raised the dead. You've, you've done all these things. You've healed blind eyes. You've forgiven the woman at the well. You've done so many things. How is it that this is it? The end. We're done. See you on the other side. And I can't even imagine some of those thoughts going through the, their minds as they go through the Last Supper and then they go into the Garden of Gethsemane and, and you know the story how it goes that Jesus was praying and seeking God and everyone was tired and exhausted. It says in some translations that they were exhausted from grief, that they were so, the, the grief of realizing that Jesus was about to be taken from them, that they were so emotionally drained and worn out from all of that experience that they couldn't even keep their eyes open to pray, to support him in prayer. And all of that comes to fruition when he gets arrested, taken before the Sanhedrin, that's the Pharisees, the teachers of the law, the pastors of the day, accused, questioned, beaten, and then sent to Pontius Pilate, the Roman ruler of the time. And you gotta understand something, that Pilate was not a nice guy. Judea, Jerusalem, that was a backwater district. He was actually sent there as punishment for his corruption as a Roman leader. They had sent them, him there saying, hey, go take care of that place because if you can't take care of that place, you're done, man. You're out. And Jesus is sent before Pilate, bruised, beaten, knowing that death is just hours away through the most brutal way mankind has ever come up with a way to end somebody's life. And he and Pilate have a conversation back and forth. And there comes a moment where Pilate asks Jesus a really important question that I want to kind of park on this, this moment with you. And it's found in John 18, 38. John 18, 38. Pilate and Jesus, they're going back and forth, talking. And Pilate asked Jesus this question that I think mankind has been asking for a very, very long time, and it hasn't stopped since Jesus died on the cross. And Pilate asked Jesus, what is truth? What is truth? What are you talking about? You're telling me about all these things and kingdoms and all this stuff. What, what is truth? And through the next set of scripture, you see that Jesus' response to him is, you're looking at him. You see, because Pilate didn't understand that truth is not a theology, it's not a philosophy. It's not an ideology. 
It's not something that you can be taught. It's not something that can be explained all the time. It's not your truth, my truth, or some version of the truth. The truth is a man, and his name is Jesus Christ. And Jesus reveals that to his disciples four chapters earlier in John 14, 6. The disciples are talking with him. He's starting to reveal like, hey, the the time is coming, guys, pretty soon. I'm not going to be with you anymore. And they're asking, we don't know the way that we're supposed to go. If you're leaving soon, where are we supposed to go? What are we supposed to do? How do we get access to the Father? And Jesus' response to them is this. And he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And I love that moment there because it shows us that we as mankind, since our fall from the garden, falling into sin, into death, have been looking for a way back to relationship with God. We've been looking for a way to get back into communion, to be able to walk with God, talk with God, to walk in forgiveness, to be righteous in his presence. We've been looking for that. And Jesus is saying, you're looking for a way. I am the way. I am the truth that you are a sin. You are fallen. There are mistakes that you have made that you cannot be holy on your own. That is true. But I am the way. I am the bridge to life. Not only here and now, but in the life to come. I am that bridge for you. I am the access back into the garden. I am the access back into that type of communion, that type of walking with God. I am that bridge for you, and that's the truth. If you look at what the first letter of truth is, lowercase, it's a cross, T, truth. Jesus is that bridge from the way we've been living, from the sin, from the destruction, from the death that we even see around us right now. He's that bridge into eternal life. And not only in the life to come, but here and now, to experience life and life to the full, Jesus said. I've come to give that to you. The truth that we need a savior, we need freedom from sin and death, and the truth that God loves us. For God so loved the world. Jesus is that truth incarnate. He is physically there saying, I am the truth that God loves you. Look at me. I am God's love for all mankind. So that you may not perish but have everlasting life. He said in John chapter 3, verse 16. Maybe some of you have read it. You see that question that Pilate asked Jesus, what is truth? Jesus is the truth for every situation, for every circumstance, for every hurt, every pain, every sin, every failure. He is that bridge of forgiveness. He became that sin, that failure, that mistake, that death for us on the cross so that we could then have access and relationship to our Father God. Because as we look a little bit later on, after he's been whipped Brutally. 39 times with a cat of nine tails, leather bands with metal and glass in them, ripping flesh from his back so that you could see through his back into his inner organs. And then being nailed on a cross, hanging there, suffocating, pulling himself up to give a breath of air. After the time that was needed for Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin for us, When he had spent the time needed on that cross, it says in John 19, 3, excuse me, 19, 30, Jesus said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. You know, Jesus, no one uh, took Jesus's life from him. Jesus wasn't murdered. He gave it up freely of his own free will. Said, I will become sin and I will die so that mankind doesn't have to experience this. Mankind can be forgiven and walk in relationship with their Heavenly Father. The truth is Jesus finished building the bridge between us looking for a way and becoming the way to eternal life. And so at at this time, I'm gonna invite Pastor Reese to come on up. And as we partake in communion, I just encourage you to think on that truth that Jesus is the bridge between where you are and your walk with your heavenly father. Pastor Reese.
such a graphic story, such a vivid image. If you're of a certain age, you may remember the movie, The Passion of the Christ. And as Aaron shared those recollections from 2,000 years ago, many of us had that image come to our minds. But I want you to understand that Christ did not die without purpose. And that's what we remind ourselves of every single time we partake of the bread and we drink of the cup. And you should at this moment, if you, again, I'll pause for you to go out and, and get the elements if, if you don't have the elements before you, but, but you can go get those. And as, as you're getting them, I just want us to, to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. You're very familiar with this because this is the passage we read you know, live whenever we receive communion here at Encounter Church. And Paul is, is writing and he says this, he says, I pass on to you when I, what I receive from the Lord himself. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and he gave thanks to God for it. And then he broke it in pieces and he said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. This is the communion meal. The, the Jews were familiar with memorial meals. They, they were familiar with the Passover meal that they took in remembrance every year of the time that, that the angel of death passed over their homes that were covered with the blood. And, and they were spared the plague that was poured upon the Egyptians when they were exiting and leaving that place of bondage. And tonight, or today, if you're not watching it on Good Friday. I'd like us to remember that God can pass over us as well. And that angel of death, maybe that's the wrong way to say that God would pass over, but, but let's just say the judgment of God has passed over us. And those of us who are washed in the blood, those of us who are Christians, those of us who have committed our hearts to God, we don't need to fear death. We don't need to fear anything. We've not been given a spirit of fear, but we've been given a spirit that cries out to Father God and says, you are our Lord, and we are your children, and we are secure and at peace in that relationship. Let's think of that security as we partake of the bread. As we prepare to take the cup as well, as Aaron alluded, sin is not something that we really have to worry about as Christians. The Bible said if we'll just confess our sins, he is faithful and just and he will forgive us of our sins and he will remove them from us. So we don't need to be anxious because we've fallen short. All we need to do is appropriate his grace and say, God, give us the strength to leave these things behind and go forward in you. And that's what I want us to remember as we drink together in Jesus' name. If you're with somebody, wherever you are, would you just take their hand, assuming that they're family and you're not having social distance, but just, just take their hand and, and take a minute and just pray a blessing over them. Pray a blessing over their health. Pray that they will you know, be strong, that their immune system will be strong, that their, uh, their eyes will be strong, that their, their sleep would be good. Pray that no anxiety, no fear, no, no uh, tension would be trying to enter into their lives. And then let them pray for you, a similar prayer. And know that even if you're by yourself watching this this service, know that we're praying for you, we're here for you, and we're believing for God's best in your life. 
If you need to reach us, you can call any of the pastors, email any of the pastors. You can leave prayer requests at ecdenver.org forward slash prayer. Uh, you can uh, join us every Saturday at 9 a.m. Uh, for prayer meetings uh, until you know further notice, until this, this crisis is over. We believe that God is going to turn this thing for good, even though a lot of other people don't see how, because that's where our faith is. We love you. We'll see you on Sunday morning. Well, thank you for watching today. We pray that this message was a blessing to you and your family. Yeah, we invite you to watch us again on Facebook or on YouTube. And if you haven't yet liked our Facebook page or are subscribing to our YouTube channel, uh, please do so now. God bless you and your family. We look forward to connecting with you again soon.